Hello and welcome to another episode of Stream Wars, our thought leader series, where we learn from industry experts about the latest trends and challenges from across the convergent TV space. Hosted by Michael Beach. Today, I'm joined by Philippe Galtan. Philippe is the Executive Vice President of Online Networks at Chicken Soup for the Soul Entertainment and President of Crackle Plus. In our talk, we cover a wide range of topics, including the economics of streaming video and the trade-offs that a network considers between maintaining exclusive content versus licensing to other streamers. Please enjoy my conversation with Philippe Gelton. Well, Philippe, thanks for joining us today. Thanks for having me, Michael. Excellent. Well, uh, we're kind of going to jump in the company here and, and background for a minute, uh, but kind of why don't you walk us through you know, how you got started in your career and how you ended up where you are today? So, um, I mean, I started in... Um, in magazine publishing, so pre pre internet, uh, I'm afraid, and um, and I started as a, as a financial analyst, I guess, a business manager of the fashion magazine L, which was uh, you know fun, definitely a fun uh, business to be involved with. Those were the times when you know you had limos waiting around the block, you know, for the fashion stylists and editors to uh, to go to their shoots, and uh, you know it was all very glitzy and 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 fun. Um, but my role was not that. My role was to basically look at the PNL, make sure that uh, you know numbers were coming in, the the revenue and the cost, and and you know, funny enough, you know, I was just thinking the other day. What I'm doing today is quite similar, <laughs> and really the the PNL is not that different in terms of structure because the business model is exactly the same. Uh, you know, you've got uh, content cost and distribution cost, and you know, ad revenue as your main uh, or only uh, driver, and 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 trying to make uh, you know the best business possible. So from that, you know, I went from magazine publishing to digital publishing, and and then from digital publishing, I would call from to streaming publishing because. You know, we're publishing content. You know, we're we're basically uh, making public um, um, original content as well as content we acquire, and uh, so I see it as a, a most you know logical um, you know evolution, I guess. And but the, but the business is pretty much the same if you think about it. Excellent. I definitely want to get into your thoughts on your content spend and, and the overall uh, economics of streaming, but first. Kind of give our our audience a, some background on Chicken Soup for the Soul Entertainment and kind of where Crackle Plus fits in there. Yeah, absolutely. So Chicken Soup for the Soul Entertainment uh, was created uh, by the the brand Chicken Soup for the Soul, uh, the publishing business, which has been around for over twenty five years, and the self help books have you know sold half a billion copies around the world. So extremely popular brands certainly. And uh, but the entertainment branch was created um, for video and and film. Uh, a business and uh, you know it's a public company uh, we have three major divisions one uh, is a production business uh, which uh, is uh, called chicken to the soul tv group uh, produces um, series for disney plus and amazon as you know and as well as um, you know unscripted content for uh, chicken to the soul or, or the crackle apps um, so wide range of content uh, being created there second is our uh, content distribution arm called screen uh, media um, what they do is uh, they acquire and, and license content um, and, you know, across all kinds of channels from uh, theater distribution to DVDs at Walmart. Uh, they also license content um, to, um, to other streamers and most of our competitors, as uh, in fact. Um, and then you've got our uh, consumer facing streaming business called Crackle Plus, which, which I lead. And what's really interesting is we have a unique vertical integration between these three businesses. So um, the whole goal being, you know, as we uh, create content, acquire content, and eventually stream content, um, all that content pays for itself before it even gets to us. And, and that allows us to, um, to build a, a pretty unique uh, uh, economic model and, and um, you know, make it more money, I guess. So if I got that correct, you know, obviously you create content, you're both, both a licensor and you've got a kind of a home streaming app and then you're, you're licensing content from other groups. Yeah. So, um, to go back to the crackle plus now we have three or four major, um, um, streaming brands. Uh, obviously we have crackle, everybody knows about, uh, we were acquired about three years ago from, from Sony. Um, and it's more of our general entertainment brand that, uh, is a combination of content we produce 
uh, content we acquire, you know, we license content. We obviously have a strong partnership with Sony. Uh, we just announced today a huge partnership with the BBC. Um, and uh, and we talk, you know, we work with the big studios um, as well as uh, we've been building our own library of content. Um, and that's what that's where Screen Media uh, comes in play. Um, our second brand is, uh, brand is uh, uh, Popcorn Flicks. It's a uh, younger, more action, you know, adventure type of movies. Um, it's a brand that's been around also for a long time that was actually developed by Screen Media. And then our third uh, large brand that we're just launching, uh, literally yesterday, we launched our first app uh, for Chicken Soup of the Soul, which is our first uh, female-focused uh, streaming uh, brand uh, that we're very excited about because we feel it's a very underserved uh, market. And um, and so we, we're putting a lot of efforts behind that one. We have other brands like Truly, uh, which is a more of a faith-based um, uh, uh, brand uh, with uh, with a lot of uh, you know great creation of, of content from a multitude of of, uh, of providers. So. I mean, what we do is provide the best product we can. You know, the, the, our mission is to build the best AVOD experience to, uh, to our users. We are, you know, 100% free, 100% ad supported. And uh, we've been putting a lot of efforts in our, obviously, our content um, um, selection and, and creation. But uh, right now, we're putting a lot of investment also in our product. Uh, because we believe that um, the Evil experience has not really changed much uh, over the last probably five, six years and since you know Netflix came out. Uh, and so we think there are real opportunities to add new types of functionalities and, and types of engagement with our, our viewers. And, and so we're deep into that uh, right now. And then the, the other thing we're, we've been focused on is uh, distribution. So adding, obviously, um, uh, more touch points. Uh, we've also expanded into the fast channel uh, creation. Uh, we see that as an opportunity to uh, make um, our content known to uh, viewers and uh, in a very fragmented market. Uh, um, it's, a, it's a great marketing platform in a way for our apps. And, and we still believe that full AVOD apps are a much better experience because you can watch what you want, when you want, and wherever you want, uh, and and we have you know thousands and thousands of of shows uh, there available at any moment. But um, you know, adding the the fast channel dimension has been helpful for us uh, in terms of uh, getting the word out. Yeah, I'm interested because it's kind of a topic that gets glossed over with kind of really you know, broad brushstrokes. But how do you decide what content that you want to keep exclusive? versus content you're willing to to license out to, you know, a competitor or a friend of me, vice versa. You know, when you look at licensing other content, whether it needs to be exclusive to you or if you're willing to have the same same content as others. Yeah, I think that's it's it's a great question. And it's not an easy answer. I think it's uh, it's a combination of of um um you know, it can be seasonal content that you want to keep exclusive. Let's say we have uh, uh, um, uh, our new Christmas movie coming out every year, and, and we definitely want to keep an exclusive window for that uh, before we may license it to someone else. Um, we have our uh, Crackle Originals that are usually exclusive to us, and they stay exclusive for a long time. We, we have yet to license any of them uh, to, to anyone else, and, uh, and we produce, you know, we launch at least uh, one or two of them every month uh, right now. Um, we, um, we certainly have acquired exclusive, uh, shows, uh, you know, we announced a couple of days ago, we were going to have, um, uh, Sherlock, uh, from the BC as, you know, an exclusivity for three years on, on Crackle. And, uh, we think it's, uh, it's a show that attracts a lot of fans and, and we want to keep it uh, at least for a long time exclusively on, on Crackle. Um, and then, you know, we, we license content from, as I said, from Sony and, and others where, uh, we might be willing to to share uh, the windows with with uh, um, with other frenemies, as you say. So yes, we are a unique position where we are a company that license content out to others, and we always try to keep, whenever possible, at least a, a, an exclusive window for our own platforms first. And and business model ad supported subscription kind of combination of the two. We, we don't sell subscriptions. We're fully ad supported and, um, you know, that's really on intent to stay that way. That's great. And kind of looking at the overall streaming space, obviously it's gotten extremely crowded. Um, you know, Crackle, I always look at as one of the really early apps, uh, into this space. 
kind of where do you fit overall in the, in the market? Obviously you're in the, the ad supported bucket, um, you know, and kind of who are your, your core competitors? We have a lot of competitors, obviously. Uh, we compete with anyone that takes time away from our viewers, certainly. Um, but then, and, and SVOD is, is one of them for, for time. Um, on the AVOD front, uh, obviously, they are the, the usual suspects, the Tubis and Plutos of the world, um, and all the TV OEMs who have been very active in building their own experiences. So you use the, the word of frenemies, and, and that's what it is, because we pretty much work with everyone. <laughs> and, uh, and so if, uh, if we don't have our, our own content, uh, our own brands, uh, streaming brands distributed, we have our own content distributed potentially on these, on these platforms. But um, we believe that, uh, first of all, we have amazing brands. Uh, when you think about Crackle, uh, which, um, you know, it's definitely not uh, the scale of some of the multi-billion dollar media companies out there and still in every consumer survey and, and it comes first usually as, as the most recognized uh, AVOD brand. Uh, so that's a huge, huge uh, advantage. Uh, I would say it's same with Chicken Soup, even though we just launched it. We know it's one of the most um, you know, safe and, and feel good, uh, you know, loved brand in, in, uh, as part of the female media world. Um, and so I think that's the, the first thing we have to offer, you know, very well-known, uh, safe brands where people know, you know, what they're going to get. Um, second is content and we spoke about it. I think as part of a the AVOD market, we've been ahead of the, the game in terms of originals, for example, you know, until recently, you know, a lot of our competitors, you know, Claim they would never do originals. They would never get into that market. And uh, and Sony, b way before we bought Crackle, was very active in, in creating uh, original content. Um, you know, we I counted recently over 110 uh, movies or series that are coming up uh, in the coming year uh, that are all going to be originals exclusive to our platforms. And so that's really a, a key element of you know providing content that doesn't exist elsewhere. Um, and at the same time, having, you know, as we said, the Sony library, the BBC content, you know, working with Lionsgate and others, because you want to give our, our, our viewers, you know, the round, rounded experience and, and the ability to, uh, um, to entertain uh, themselves where, you know, with whatever content they, they, they want. Um, product, as I mentioned, is, is a key element. You know, we've already announced, we haven't launched it yet. We're going to be probably the first ABOT platforms with, uh, with a loyalty program uh, where, um, and you know, there's always, a, we have this joke where we, uh, you know, we, we are not charging the consumers. We may actually pay them to, to come and, and pay <laughs> and watch content on, on, the, on Crackle. And I think there's not a single business out there that doesn't have a loyalty program, you know, and, and reward their most loyal uh, uh, consumers. So that's something we're, we're very excited about and uh, we're planning to launch later this year. Um, and, um, and I would say one of our strengths also is advertising. So we have an amazing uh, advertising team. Uh, they are so good, in fact, that uh, we have way more demand and supply and uh, we've been expanding our offering to other premium media platforms and and so we are you know we represent a number of, of prestigious streamers out there in the marketplace and and that helps us in terms of scale so we, when you think about our uh, scale and you know for um, for the advertising market it's not just our own and operated brands but it's also a portfolio of partner brands um, and and i think the the interesting thing about having a portfolio of brands is that you you're able to um, to attract a, a broader number of of advertisers and 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 partners, um, and and we've been very active, for example, in the branded content uh, creation and and uh, and being you know very flexible and and nimble you know in working with with advertisers. So um, so yeah, I think we have a lot of strength. Uh, we uh, we're still probably seen as a underdog, but. Uh, working really hard and, and looking forward to surprise uh, the market. You talked about the demand outpacing supply on the advertising is majority or all of your advertising direct sold, or do you work with kind of supply side platforms or? So we actually have a majority of, of our business sold direct and, mm -hmm. um, and, you know, between the direct business and, and the uh, uh, supply side platform business, you've got, you know, this emerging, uh, category of, of programmatic direct, which is really leveraging the, the programmatic pipes, but selling direct to, um, to, to the agency and clients 
who, uh, especially I think we've seen since COVID, have been uh, really more uh, careful about uh, uh, the context of where the ads are running, and it's very important for them to have the, the you know, the knowledge and of knowing where, you know, what what is, uh, uh, what kind of content they, they're running against. So I think that's been. Uh, that's actually reinforced, I think, the, the the direct side of the business. Also, a lot of the dollars are coming from television, are have been traditionally placed direct and uh, directly with uh, with the agencies and clients. So um, we are very active uh, during the uh, upfront and new fronts, and and uh, that's uh, that's a big part of our business. What what is a typical advertiser you look like? Are they, are they buying television advertising already, or are they unique to to streaming? No, for the most part, they're the top top advertisers. You know, it's pharma, it's uh, insurance companies, it's P and you know P and G package goods, uh, QSR. Uh, so most of them are your typical TV advertisers, and you you would recognize most of those campaigns from traditional TV. Uh, we also work with um, you know local. Uh, uh, networks, uh, and so you'll find also some local advertising. But for the most part, you know you're you're thinking about the the big TV brands. Okay. Well, like we talked about earlier, but the you know I'm fascinated by you know how you would view the kind of economics overall of the of the streaming model and how you decide how much to spend on content with its you know originals or licensed and um, kind of what's your your big picture take on that. Um. We're obviously in a business where all our costs are really ref share, right? It's it's really about how much uh, is going to go to the platform, distribution platform, how much is going to go to the content uh, creator, and and therefore I think our uh, integration with the rest of the company, you know, in terms of creating our own content or acquiring libraries from, you know, to 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 only own them. Um, Screen Media, our partner, you know, sister company, acquired Sonar Entertainment last year. We just acquired another company called 1091, which brings a ton of uh, content in you know very niche and very important niche uh, uh, areas. And so, number one is you may want to own most of your content or more and more of your content, so that big part of that cost you're actually paying to yourself, and the money stays within the company. So that's rule number one. Um, n- rule number two is working with um, brands, as I mentioned just now. Um, to help fund the content. Um, so we've become, I think, uh, better and better at um, uh, selling brand integrations into our original content. And uh, shows like Going From Broke, for example, which is going to be in the, its third season this year, uh, show that we've created with Ashton Kutcher, who is uh, the executive producer, is also a friend of the company. And um, Fully funded uh, through brand integrations, uh, you know. So when the show comes to crackle, basically every every dollar sold is is profit, which is really you know the way you you would want to uh, to do that. Um, we've also partnered with within co productions. You know, we we, we co produce content with A and E uh, on some projects, um, and uh, and because we have a our licensing arm with Screen Media we're able to uh, resell international rights or other other windows for that content. So again, the, the whole concept of being integrated is to lower the cost or fund the cost of content as much as we can. Um, and then, but of course, once in a while, we'll splurge on, on the on content that really matters and, and we feel is uh, going to make a difference. Uh, so um, so that's really where, where we're, you know, we're looking for a balance uh, between uh, own own content and, and licensed content. How, with the kind of more traditional side of the business, is there, you know, do you do like 360 type deals with content creators for, you know, print, your know, books, you know, video and everything? Um, I think we can, we have now with the launch of the Chicken Soup of the Soul uh, network, uh, we're going to have many more of these opportunities. Um, you know, with Crackle, obviously, it was a bit difficult because there was less of a of a connection between the the, the publishing and, and and the Crackle brand. But you know, Chicken Soup for the Soul um, started actually production uh, three four years ago before we we had the platform to uh, to launch that content. Um, and a lot of these stories or the themes of the of the shows were inspired by. Um, by the by, the books themselves. You know, the the companies still produce ten to twelve new books every year, 
uh, with different topics and different subjects. Um, so there are over 100 uh, different titles that are in print uh, right now. So that means there are a lot of different topics and subjects, and they range from you know teenagers to pets to um, you know every every aspect of of life that you can imagine. Um, what we're trying to really rec recreate uh, with our Chicken Soup of the Soul originals, in particular on the new network, is this idea that uh, we want to make the world better one story at a time, which is the mission of the brand, uh, original brand. And, uh, and so we're recreating that through you know, amazing partnerships with influencers and hosts and, and content creators uh, who um, you know, embody the, those values and and our goal with Chicken Soup of the Soul is to recreate this very safe place where you know we're gonna see uh, known known faces and and uh, warm and accessible um, um, you know hosts uh, for some of our unscripted uh, content um, so that you you know it's gonna be very it's gonna feel very very um, consistent with the with the whole brand uh, even if it's a you know different different medium altogether certainly and so it's not just taking a, a story from a book and turn that into a a, a, a movie or, or a scripted series it's it's more about bringing the values of the brand and uh, and super serving the the fan base of the books but also i think broadening that that um reach to really every woman uh in 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 the country because um we we can serve every age and and suddenly with a very diverse uh, uh, uh supply of content uh, that that is uh, one of the top you know values of, of the brand yeah i love that and if my uh my target fo focus group is correct then uh that's your successful offering because i like to go through there and you know their traditional media area has shrunk over the years but to me the the items that are there and prominent have a huge audience right because and uh if memory serves you correctly uh chicken soup for the soul is is prominent there absolutely and you know interestingly we see personalities and content creators <clears throat> coming to us from both the tv world uh where you know cable being where going where it's going you know there are a lot of great talent that are looking for new platforms to uh, to create and distribute their content as well as from the digital world on youtube and uh, and and social platforms um uh, you know who may not be able to get a show on AGTV or, or food network but they suddenly are, have been creating amazing content and they've been building very strong relationships uh with their audience um they're they're beloved by by their fans and and uh, they'd love to be able to um, to build, you know, maybe a more premium platform for for their ideas. Absolutely. Well, the the theme for this season of our, our podcast is around business models and investing. And I know that uh, you know, you do quite a bit of angel investing. Kind of, what's your thesis, and kind of what kind of companies are you looking for as an investor? Um, I'm not as active as I used to be. To uh, first of all, because I'm too busy, but. Um, and um, you know, I, I'm I'm not a very good investor in the sense that I tend to invest in what I like uh, instead of you know thinking to you know more rationally about uh, about the business models and um, and I'm usually attracted maybe less about the the power of the technology than than the uh, you know the the consumer experience or or, or the service that's provided uh, to to consumer. You know, most of the companies I've looked at over the years where very pro, you know, close to the media world, you know, influencers and content distribution, um, and uh, you know, probably the most the, the 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 most impressive that I've that I've seen and that I had a chance to be involved with is Muckrack, uh, which has been you know has become one of the top PR uh, platform, uh, but also for journalists, a great way for them to to build their own portfolio and 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 elevate their their visibility. Um, and uh, so I think you know it's it's a brilliant way to connect the dots between uh, content creators, influencers, and and the people who have the money to actually um, you know fund fund uh, uh, things, and that's the you know all big brands who, who need to do PR. Um, so yeah, I think it's really about for me you know it's it's more about leveraging um, content creation. Um, the recognizing the talent of of people who are in the, in the market for uh, in the media market, 
and helping them, you know, elevating them and, and giving them a platform where they can actually make a living. So in that sense, I'm not sure I'm a great investor, but, uh, you know, that's that's the stuff that gets me excited. I'm going to ask you for a prediction in a minute, but I'll kind of go back to your your point about the influencers. We just recorded an episode with uh, Troy Young and kind of his stance was, you know, you got to look at these influencers like they are media brands. Um, are you doing deals now with influencers for content on Crackle Plus or, or Chicken Soup for the Soul? We, um, we, I think we announced it. Um, we're working with Tia Mori, for example, and the Kin Community uh, uh, team, uh, who's going to create uh, um, a new original series for uh, Chicken Soup for the Soul. And it's just the tip of the iceberg. So yes, we're doing a lot of these uh, deals right now and, uh, and uh, uh, forging uh, ties with um, uh, influencers and who have um, proven themselves in creating great content, high quality content, and, uh, and they're looking to reach a new audience and expand their audience uh, from, from where they are today. Uh, so definitely something we're, we're working on very hard. Yeah, no, I'm fascinated by that. All right, lightning round here to to wrap up. Uh, kind of give me one prediction for a year from now that uh, for most people is under the radar. Well, I would have to say that Chicken Soup of the Soul Entertainment is going to become you know uh, a billion dollar company is going to be acquired by uh, Mega uh, Media Group. So nobody's talking about that not right now, but uh, who knows? Uh, it could uh, could happen. I love it. We're counting on it. And then, uh, you know, if our audience was trying to get kind of caught up in everything we talked about today, kind of what would be uh, a couple areas best for them to, to read and, you know, what, what people should they be looking for? Well, I have to say, still the screen is a great place to go, <laughs> which you're familiar with. You know, I'm amazed how you're able to pull all these data out of seemingly thin air. I don't know if you make it up, but um, it's, uh, you know, it's really terrific to be able to, um, uh, understand, you know, the, the trends of the different parts of the industry. And, and there's, there, there are very few places where, where data is available. Uh, so I think that's a great place. Um, I, um, you know, I really enjoy following Evan Shapiro. You know, he has, uh, you know, also, you know, obviously he, he's introducing himself as a cartographer of, of the streaming world, but I think he also has great insights uh, in terms of uh, the different players and, and the trends and where we're going and, and what people should be thinking about. So um, so I think that he's a, he's a good source as well. Yeah, absolutely. Um, well, Philippe, I appreciate your time. I know our audience is going to love this talk. All right. Well, thanks so much for having right, me Thank today. you. Thank you for joining us on this episode of Screen Wars. I hope you enjoyed the discussion. You can find out more about Cross Screen Media at crossscreenmedia.com. Please don't forget to sign up for our weekly newsletter, State of the Screens. You can find us on social media at Cross Screen Media. Join us next time for more insights and analysis straight from the experts.